Imagine having this guy as your brother or your brother-in-law. You know, you're at a family dinner, you, you offer up something you think is pretty insightful, pretty pithy, and you know what's coming. Somebody around the table is gonna go, well, you know, Confucius says, and you're like, yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, Confucius always has something impressive to say. Well, you know what? There's a reason why we still quote this guy 1,500 years later. It's because he made the complex pretty simple. And I heard a quote by Confucius that's just sort of stuck with me and tapped me on the shoulder a lot over the last month. And in moments when I feel out of balance or inefficient or ineffective or, or stuck, this quote keeps showing up. So I'd like to offer this to you. He said, he who chases two rabbits catches neither. Now, this is, it could easily be about time management, obviously, but I think this is also about sort of our broader life and our commitments, is when we try to attend to and focus on multiple things, it dilutes it and we don't do very well at, at delivering on any of them. So the question becomes, why do we chase two rabbits? Well, I think one of the first reasons is, over time, the first rabbit we're chasing can kind of lose its fluffiness. It's not as appealing as it once was, or maybe it's just sort of an ugly rabbit to begin with. You gotta do taxes, and it's not something you get fired up for. But a lot of times, there's value in just reconnecting to why this was on our scope in the first place. What value does it add? What does it offer? It's reconnecting with your why, as Simon Sinek would say it. But also, maybe over time, coming back to why is this a commitment in my life? What does it maybe free up once I finally put this thing to bed and, and address this and close this rabbit out so I can now focus more directly on the other rabbits? So over time, things may lose their luster, but we can reconnect to where the value is. But sometimes the value is obvious, but we still have second rabbit show up. I want to be present and engage with my family. I want to be in balance. I want to focus on these things that in my company I know are important. So I don't have to get fired up about them. These things matter. My, my health? Come on, man. I want to do well at that. So what is it that brings the second rabbit into the room? Well, a lot of times it's you don't realize how sneaky second rabbits are. They will show up uninvited or without us even realizing it because there's just ways that they enter the room. A lot of times it kind of looks like this. There are buzzes and dings and blips and likes that direct our attention to, ooh, that's a cool rabbit. Rabbit showed up in the room. And even though I sat down at my desk to focus on this, or I'm in the room with my daughter who I want to spend time with and be present, all of a sudden I realize I'm, I'm locked onto this. What the heck just happened there? How'd this rabbit show up? And I find myself now saying out loud, thanks to Confucius, get back to rabbit number one. Do you, want to, do you want to catch that rabbit or not? And it's going to be a constant battle, but it's worth it. So this guy might have been an obnoxious brother-in-law, but he was on to something. So the challenge for you is the same challenge to me. If there are commitments in your life that are primary, number one quality rabbits, catch that one first, and then you can move on to rabbit number two.